friends my name is dr pv badde associate professor department of chemistry arbi narayan rao boroke mahavidyalaya sri rampur so today we are going to discuss the chapter number first from course ch333 organic chemistry class tybsc the chapter of the name of the chapter the strength of organic acids and bases so we know organic acids and bases are the most reactive organic compounds and extremely large number of organic compounds function as either acid or acids or organic bases the organic acids reacts with organic bases and to form various type of salts the what makes a compound function as a acid or a base in order to understand this we will have to study the different theories of acid and bases secondly all the organic acid and bases don't have the same strength the strength of organic acid and bases or relative strength of organic acids and bases are different we take one example suppose here you take acetic acid and you take monochloroacetic acid we remember this when we compared the relative strength of these two acids the monochloroacetic acid is more stronger acid than acetic acid when you think about a base and you take a example of aniline and you take a example of cyclohexyl amine and when we compare the relative strength of these two bases the aniline is a weaker base then cyclohexyl amine is a stronger base so in this way acid and bases don't have the same strength so we would like to know which factors affects on the the strength of acid and bases and we, we have already discussed the structural effect in fibsc there are the various structural effects like inductive effect then the resonance effect then the hydrogen bonding the hyperconjugation then the steric effects so as we discuss these uh, structural effects in fibsc so we start from the various theories of acid and bases and then we will discuss on how the structural effects is correlates on the or uh, correlates with the acidity and the basicity of various acids and bases so first we see the various theories of acid and bases this is the theories of acid and bases so there are the three theories for acid and bases the first one arrhenius theory and uh, this is the first theory of acid and bases so according to arrhenius theory what is meant by acid so according to the arrhenius theory the any substance any substance after dissociation after dissociation in aqueous medium gives h plus means according to the arrhenius theory what is meant by the acid any substance which dissociate in aqueous medium and gives the h plus such type of compounds we call as acid you take example of hcl in aqueous medium hcl is dissociate we give the h plus and the cl minus and after dissociation of hcl in aqueous medium 
or in water the hcl gives the h plus so according to arrhenius theory hcl is called as a acid then when we think about a base base is nothing but any substance after dissociation in aqueous medium it gives OH minus sign means the any substance which dissociate in aqueous medium and give the OH minus ion these or such type of compounds we call as a basis or base we take example of NaOH and when we take NaOH in aqueous medium NaOH is dissociate it gives the Na plus and OH minus sign so that's why this NaOH is act as a base according to the Arrhenius theory so what is the limitation of this Arrhenius theory so Arrhenius theory or Arrhenius explain the acid and bases in aqueous medium so that's why this is the one limitation means acid and base the Arrhenius is explained the acid and base concept in aqueous medium then once we discuss the first theory then we go towards the second theory of acid and bases and the second theory is the Laurie and Bronsted theory Laurie and Bronsted theory so according to Laurie and Bronsted theory what is mean by the acid so acid is H plus donor means what when you take any compound and it dissociate and donate the H plus that is called as acid and when we take an example of the base base is nothing but H plus acceptor this is a simple definition of acid and base means according to Lori and Bronsted theory the acid is a substance which donate the H plus base is a substance which accept the H plus here you take one example we take example of H2SO4 and H2O when the reactions are takes place then there is a formation of H3O plus and HSO4 minus we remember here this H2SO4 when we see the left hand side reaction H2SO4 donate the H plus to the H2O and there is a formation of H3O plus so what happened here this H2SO4 we call as an acid one when we think about this after H2SO4 donate the H plus to the H2O and then there is a formation of HSO4 minus and that's why HSO4 minus we call as a base one and when H2O take the H plus from the H2SO4 and there is formation of H3O plus so that's why this H2O we call as base 2 and this H3O is called as a acid 2 so in case of the Laurie and Bronsted theory there is a formation of conjugated acid base pair and when we think about this reaction when you take an example of H2SO4 H2SO4 in the left hand side reaction give the H plus to the H2O formation of H3O plus and after giving the H plus to the H2O H2SO4 convert into the HSO4 minus so HSO4 minus is nothing but a base 1 so HSO4 minus is a conjugated base of H2SO4 and when we think about the example of H2O and this H3O H2O takes the H plus or take the H plus from the H2SO4 so that's why it is called as a base so according to the Laurie and Brosted H2O is act as a base and when we think about a backward reaction H3O plus donate the H plus to the HSO4 minus so that's why H3O plus we call as a acid 2 
So in this way, when we compare the acid-base pair, then the H2SO4 is acid, HSO4 minus is the conjugated base of H2SO4. When we think about a backward reaction, H3O plus is the acid and then H2O is a conjugated base of acid 2 or we call the H3O plus. So in Laurier and Bronsted theory, there is a formation of conjugated acid base pair. So once we discuss the second theory of acid and bases, then we go towards the third theory for acid and bases and this is called the Lewis theory. This is third theory for acid and bases. So what happened in case of the Lewis theory? According to the Lewis theory, what is meant by the acid? Acid is nothing but lone pair acceptor. Means according to the Lewis theory, any compound which accepts the lone pair of electron is called as an acid. What is meant by the base? Base is nothing but lone pair of electrons donor. Means any compound which donates the lone pair of electrons, such a type of compounds we call as a base according to the Lewis theory. And when we take an example, like uh, NH3 and you take an uh, example of BF3. So in case of uh, NH3, nitrogen having the lone pair of electrons, this lone pair of electron is donated to the boron because boron is electropositive. Boron takes the lone pair of electron from the nitrogen and there is a formation of the salt like this. So in this way, according to the Lewis theory, in case of this NH3, nitrogen having the lone pair, lone pair is donated to the boron, boron is electropositive, it accepts the electron from the nitrogen and there is formation of this type of salt. So that's why BF3 is act as a acid because it accepts the lone pair of electron from nitrogen and NH3 is act as a base because the nitrogen from NH3 donated the lone pair of electron to the BF3. So in this way, NH3 is act as a base because it donates the lone pair of electron and BF3 is act as a Lewis acid because it accepts the lone pair of electron from NH3. And we remember in this case, this, defi this definition of or this Lewis definition is much more generalized picture of acid and bases. All the molecules which have the negative charge or non-bonding pair of electrons, all that compounds we consider as a base. So we take example of uh, HO minus or OH minus. We take example of SH minus or RO minus. So all species which having the negative charge on it. And so that's why such a type of compounds behave as a base according to the Lewis theory or OH or SH minus OH minus RO minus is behave as like a base and so that's why according to Lewis theory such a type of compounds we call as a base. Then uh, next uh, important point the strength of organic acids and bases. strength of strength of organic acids and bases and when we discuss strength of organic acid and bases that is pka and pkb values or ka and KB values. So what happened here when we consider regarding the acid and we take one example HA is acid and when HA is acid and it undergoes dissociation in water or aqueous medium and then there is formation of H3O plus and the A minus. Then we write the uh, dissociation or equilibrium constant. 
constant for this reaction and then you write the concentration of H3O plus concentration of A minus divided by or there is a HA and concentration of H2. Then in this case we rewrite this equation and we write simply Ka is equal to concentration of H3O plus concentration of A minus and this is the HA. So what is the meaning of this Ka? Ka is nothing but a dissociation constant of that particular acid HA. Means what? When Ka is more and more then the dissociation of HA is more and more and the concentration of H plus is more and more. Means when the Ka is more then this acid is more and more dissociate. The concentration of H plus is more and ultimately the your acid is more stronger acid. Means what happened? Ka is nothing but the dissociation constant and when the dissociation constant is increased then your acid is more and more stronger. So that's why what is the relation between the strength of acid and Ka? So Ka is more your acid is more stronger and when in this case what is the relation between Ka and pKa? So pKa value is small then your acid is more stronger. So that's why we remember well when the dissociation constant of acid Ka is more then dissociation is more concentration of H plus is more ultimately your acid is more stronger and then Ka is more acid is more stronger. pKa is small your acid is a more stronger acid. So this is the relation between the Ka and pKa and the strength of organic acid is depends upon the dissociation constant. If dissociation constant is more your acid is a more stronger. When we think about uh, the, the strength of bases and when we take an example of uh, this base, base uh, take the H plus form water it convert into the BH and then we remember here you write then OH minus. So what happens similarly uh, as like acid there is a KB is there and we write dissociation constant you write a BH concentration of BH concentration of OH minus and here you write a concentration of base. So this KB, KB is a dissociation constant of a base as like a Ka is a dissociation constant of acid. So what is the relation between KB and the strength of the base? When the KB is more and more then your base is a, a concentration of BH plus and OH minus is more and more. So ultimately your as base is more and more stronger. So that's why similarly when the Ka regarding the acid Ka is nothing but a dissociation constant of acid is more, your acid is more stronger. Kb is a dissociation constant of the base is more, means the concentration of BH plus and OH minus is more, so your acid is more and more stronger. So Ka and Kb is more and more, then your acid and your base respectively is more and more stronger. Then the what is the factors? The next important part the factors is affecting the strength of acid. Factors, factors affecting, affecting on the factors which affecting on acid strength. So, which factors they are affecting on the acid strength? So first one, the strength of HA bond. This is the first factor, the strength of HA bond. Means we consider the bond between hydrogen and A. The bond is more and more stronger, then ultimately dissociation is decreased. And when the dissociation is decreased, then ultimately Ka is smaller. And when Ka is smaller, then your acid is a weaker one. So that's why the bond between hydrogen and A is more and more stronger, then dissociation is less, concentration of H plus is less, ultimately your acid is a weaker one. Then the next point, electronegativity of A. Electronegativity of A. 
So what happened? When the electronegativity of A is increased, then the formal positive charge or hydrogen is increased. Means we write H and A. When electronegativity is increased, then formal positive charge on hydrogen is increased. And when the formal positive charge on hydrogen is increased, then ultimately your acid is a stronger acid. So the electronegativity of A is increased, then strength of your acid is also increased. Then the next point, the stability of conjugated base. Stability of conjugated base A minus. So what is the important point? Means what happened? We remember when you take example of uh, HA, then H2O, we remember formation of H3O plus and then the A minus. This is called conjugated base. So the next factor, the stability of conjugated base. How the stability of conjugated base is affect on the strength of acid? Means we remember the stability of conjugated base is again important and decides by the three factors. The first one, electronegativity of A and the second factor plus I effect or there is a minus I effect and third factor there is a plus R effect or there is a minus R effect. So what happened? When the stability of conjugated base is more, in which cases the stability of conjugated base is more, when the electronegativity of A is more, then this A, A then what happened? The formal positive charge on hydrogen is increases and then your acid is uh, more stronger. Then when the electronegativity of A is increases, then what happened? Tendency to hold the negative charge is more and more. And when tendency to hold the negative charge on A is more and more, then your conjugated base or A minus is more stable and then your acid is more stronger. Then what is important? There is a inductive effect or resonance effects. Mean suppose A having the groups which gives the minus I and minus R effect. Then what about the stability of conjugated base A minus? means A carrying the groups which gives the electron donating inductive effect or electron donating resonance effect is there then what happen the conjugated base is destabilized. We remember well means the groups which are attached to the A or conjugated base which exerts or which gives the plus I effect and plus R effect then conjugated base is destabilized and when the conjugated base is destabilized it again reacts with H plus and there is formation of HA in a backward reaction. So ultimately, when the conjugated base is destabilized, then recombination of A minus and H plus is there and there is formation of backward reaction and there is a regeneration of your acid, HA is there. So the, the stability of conjugated base is very important. But when we remember, when we remember the groups which are attached to the conjugated base or A, it, which, which gives the minus I and minus R effect is there, then conjugated base is well stabilized. And when the conjugated base is well stabilized means what happened the probability of the backward reaction is less and when the probability of backward reaction is less then the concentration of pH plus is more and your acid is uh, more and more stronger. So that's why the stability of conjugated base is very important when we want to decide the, the acidity of various acids. Then the next and important point or factor is there that is the fourth one and that is a solvent. So what happened here? We remember the solvents having the two types. The one is a polar solvent and second one is a non-polar solvent. So what happened? When we take an example of HA, this is your acid and this acid is dissociate and after dissociation or we take example of HCl, it is better to take example of HCl. After dissociation, it gives the H plus and Cl minus. When here we use a polar solvent. And in this case, suppose we take a polar solvent as like water. What happened? When we use a polar solvent, then HCl is a 
completely dissociate in a water. Means water is a polar solvent. You take a HCl, HCl is acid, and in in aqueous medium or in polar solvent, this water HCl is completely dissociate. And when the HCl is completely dissociate, then what happen? The concentration of H plus is more. Ultimately, your acid is more stronger. This is the first reason. But what happen? When we use a polar solvent, then what happen? This is H plus and the Cl minus is solvated by water molecule. Means what happen after solvation? What happen? This conjugated base Cl minus is well stabilized due to the solvation effect of a polar solvent. And then the Cl minus is well stabilized. Then the possibility of recombination is less, and your acid is a more stronger. So that's why in aqueous or in polar solvent, the dissociation of your acid is increased. This is the first point, and second point, the charge form that is the H plus and Cl minus is solvated or it is stabilized by solvation of polar solvent like a water molecule, and then the recombination is the probability of recombination is minimized, and that's why the concentration of H plus is more. Your acid is more stronger. But when we take an example of this HCl, and you take an example of that is a toluene. Toluene is a non-polar solvent. And what happen? When you take HCl, we use a toluene. Toluene is a non-polar solvent, and it is a undissociated. Means what? Means here you take a polar solvent H2O, HCl is fully dissociated or completely dissociated and the charge form H plus and Cl minus is solvated by the water molecule. It is stabilized. Your acid is more stronger. You take a HCl in toluene. We change the solvent. Non-polar solvent you take a toluene and what happened in toluene? HCl is undissociated. Means there is no dissociation of HCl is there in toluene in non-polar solvent and when there is no dissociation there is a concentration of H plus is a nothing is there and when the concentration is decreases concentration of H plus is decreases ultimately your strength of acid is a decreases so that's why this is the role of solvent is very important when we want to decide the acidity then once you decide the these factors means one two three four strength of HA bond then electronegativity of A then stability of conjugated base A minus and the solvent how these factors they are affect on the strength of various acid and bases then we take one simple example and we take a very simple example acetic acid and we take an example monochloroacetic acid both acid after dissociate after dissociation formation of acetate anion and H plus so here is also the formation of the acetate anion of monochloroacetic acid. We call this is the conjugated base. This is the conjugated base. And we explain the, the acidity between these two acids. In this case, we remember this is acetic acid, monochloroacetic acid. Monochloroacetic acid is more stronger acid than the acetic acid. So this is a simple example and we want to compare the relative acidity between these two acids. And we explain why this acid is more stronger than first one using the various structural effect. So that's why well, we remember this methyl, methyl group donated the electron. And methyl group donated the electron, methyl is the electron donating group. And when it do donated the electron, then it gives the plus I effect. When we think about a chlorine, there is a chlorine is there and chlorine is the electron withdrawing group. It withdraws the electron from this acid group or CH2. So it gives the minus I effect. And what is the effect? We already discussed when there is a plus I effect, conjugated base is destabilized. When there is a plus I effect of this methyl, the conjugated base is destabilized. And when conjugated base is destabilized, then this conjugated base is again recombines with H plus and then backward reaction is proceed. So what happened? The concentration of H plus is less and when the backward reactions are takes place, then again we get your acetic acid in back. When we take an example of monochloroacetic acid, then what happened? 
this chlorine withdraw the electron and when it withdraws the electron it gives the minus i effect and when there is a minus i effect is there then conjugated base is well stabilized and when the conjugated base is well stabilized then the possibility of recombination of this conjugated base with h plus is less and then backward reaction is also less and so that's why what happened your concentration of h plus is more in second case and when the concentration of more uh, concentration of h plus is more due to the conjugated base is well stabilized by the minus i effect of the chlorine and when there is a minus i effect of the chlorine conjugated base is uh, sorry stabilized then recombinations of this conjugated base is not recombined with the h plus and then the concentration of h plus is more so that's why or it makes monochloroacetic acid is a more stronger acid than the acetic acid so in this way we compare the relative acidity of various uh, compounds using the inductive effect using the resonance effect using the hydrogen bonding so that's why how the structural effect is important for determining the relative strength of acid and bases